guys, my name is Brittany and I am a keeper here in the Houston Toad Recovery Program at the Houston Zoo. We are currently behind the scenes, that's where our Houston Toad breeding colony is, where they live all the time. Um, inside this building we have two rooms and then we also have an additional room that we were recently able to expand into over behind the scenes in the children's zoo. Now if you come to the zoo and you're thinking, I'd like to see some Houston Toads, where? So you go into the reptile house on the native amphibian wall or the native species wall. In the native amphibian exhibit, you'll be able to see some Houston toads, some Gulf Coast toads and some other native amphibians. So right now, it's a great time to visit the Houston, well, it's a great time to visit us here, the Houston Toad Recovery Program, because it's breeding season, right? So this is our first week of breeding. Normally, we would start early to mid-February, um, but as we all know, uh, the weather got pretty bad for a while, so we had to postpone that. Um, so it's still breeding season for these guys out in the wild, so we just started a little late. This is our first round. Um, as you can see, we've got some pairs who haven't started yet. They are amplexing. That is the way that these guys breed, uh, so the male kind of gives her a nice big hug and she kind of carries him around like a backpack and then once she starts laying her eggs he will fertilize those as she lays them right so it's kind of really up to her he'll give her some squeezes try and entice her to lay those eggs but it's up to these guys whether they want to lay their eggs now uh, we do have some that have already laid We've got some egg strands ready to go. Those will be going out, being released up in Bastrop on Thursday. And then we will do it all over again with some more pairs. Uh, we do several weeks of breeding. Those guys will all be released out into the wild up in Bastrop. And then uh, we will do our final round of breeding with our holdbacks. Those guys will stay here for future breeding. So um, if you guys happen to have any questions about breeding season, the Houston toads in general, what we do here, please make sure you ask those and we will try and get you guys some answers. So the Houston toads were added to the endangered species list back in 1970. Historically, you would have been able to see these guys in and around the Houston area, but that was decades ago. Um, around 1970, you couldn't find them here anymore. They had to move northwest, uh, mainly because we live here. We like to cover things in concrete, and they don't like that very much. They had to move up to where there was more area. These guys are habitat specialists. So they require a deep, sandy soil, a decent canopy cover, and very little to no underbrush. They will estivate for most of the year. That means they will bury themselves down into the sand and they will sit around and wait through the dry, hot summers that we tend to have here. And then they will come back out when temperatures start to get a little better. They will eat, they eat everything. Uh, and then they will start breeding. It's kind of how they live their life. So Lindsay asks, how many eggs do you release? Um, so we shoot every year for a million eggs. That's what we shoot for, that's our goal. Um, in 2018, we released over a million eggs. Um, the last two years, we released just slightly less than that. Um, but that was due to the fact that we sent quite a few adults over to other facilities that have joined into our purpose here of helping the Houston toads out in the wild. Um, so we just had fewer adults to kind of breed. So those guys are helping out as well. They have started their own breeding colonies. Um, hopefully this year we'll be back close to a million. So sorry if I butcher this name. Jerenia asks, how many Houston toads do we have at the zoo? Um, so here in our breeding colony, we have about 600 individuals. Uh, those are not all breeding adults. 
uh, quite a few of those actually are, uh, you may remember our Facebook Live from last year. That was our hold background and quite a few of the toads we have here right now are from that hold background. Uh, so they are too young to breed. Um, it takes the males about a year to be ready to breed. Uh, the females, it takes about two years for them to be able to breed. So those guys will be hanging around until they're ready for us to add them into the rotation here. Um, but they are quite cute, I will say. They are tiny forms of their adult versions. Uh, they're incredibly cute. Uh, Christy asked, how big do the toads get? So typically, when it's not breeding season, the males and females are generally about the same size, um, around 50 grams, uh, some bigger, some smaller, as with humans, right? Um, but yeah, typically around 50 grams. Now in breeding season, when they start getting ready to breed and getting ready to lay their eggs and things like that, the females will get huge. As you've seen with some of the pairings around here, they kind of blow up like little balloons. Uh, it does not take much to change their weight. Um, just going to the bathroom will change their weight drastically. So the females get pretty big during breeding season. They lose quite a bit of weight after they lay their eggs, but we do make sure we weigh them before and after to make sure no one has lost too much. And we actually put them in their tubs after the females have laid their eggs so we can feed them some crickets and make sure they are nice and healthy after they've laid all of those eggs. So Athena asks, what is their life expectancy? So out in the wild, these guys actually, their life expectancy is not a whole lot. It's about two or three years. And like I said, females are only really ready to breed at two years. So as you can see, that's not too great for them, but two or three years, sadly, these guys are tasty at every point in their life. From eggs to toadlets to adults, everything wants to eat them out in the wild. Um, so life expectancy only about two to three years. Now here in our breeding colony, because they don't have any predators, we aren't eating them. And we have a vet staff here that takes really good care of them. We have toads living up to 10 and 11 years old. And some of those ladies do still breed. Some of those ladies do still lay eggs. Um, so we keep them healthy and around as long as we can. We take really great care of them. Um, some of these guys even get names once they've been here for a while. Um, I thoroughly enjoy naming them. I can't wait to name my babies from last year. Aaron asks, is it possible to see them in our backyards or do they no longer live in the Houston area? So Houston toads no longer live here in the Houston area. In order to see them, you would have to go to one of the nine counties that house them. Um, your best bet would be to visit Bastrop State Park. That's gonna be your best bet in seeing Houston toads in the wild. Now the toads in your backyard, those more than likely are Gulf Coast toads. Um, they can really live anywhere, in your backyard, in the Walmart parking lot. They live everywhere, they eat everything, right? So the difference between the two, you'll see with a Gulf Coast toad, they typically have that yellow goldish line down their side right? Um, if you're looking at males, the male Houston toad has a bright blue throat. Uh, the male Gulf Coast toad does not. Um, you can also look at their cranial crest. It is, if you can see it in that video right there, um, it is the two lines directly behind the eyes. On these guys, it is L-shaped, and on the Gulf Coast toad, it is a Y-shaped. Their heads are also slightly different. Again, if you'd like to see them together to see the differences, if you come to the zoo and visit our reptile house on the native species wall in the native amphibian exhibit, both of these toads are housed. You can see the difference between them and kind of compare them for yourself. Antasia asks, what can we do to help local wild toads? Well, what you, one of the big things that you can do in general um, is watch your plastic use. Um, so 
What you can do instead of buying plastic water bottles at the store, you can buy reusable water bottles and then either use your fridge water, tap water, or you can buy the Brita filter, that kind of thing, and you can start using your reusable water bottles. The Houston Zoo is pla single-use plastic free. Uh, we all have our reusable water bottles. There are plenty of stations around the zoo that you can use to refill yours. So that's definitely something you can look at doing on a regular basis to help most any animal out in the wild. Uh, so if you guys want to see a little more, uh, we do have some toadlets from our last season that you can take a look at right over here. Now you're a little bit that you were seeing there is some of our normal tanks. So this is a typical setup that we would do for emergent, emergent toadlets. Uh, when they start popping their back legs and their front legs, they still have their little tail. We set them up in these tanks like this. As you see, these guys just look like miniature versions of the adults and they look hungry. So let's toss some crickets in there and see if we can get some good feeding response. These guys will eat just about anything that moves. Uh, here in the zoo, we typically feed them crickets. And now every once in a while, we'll get some wax worms and different other things that we are able to feed them. But for the most part, it's just crickets. Uh, anyone who happens to own a reptile or amphibian at home, uh, you'll be used to dusting your crickets with vitamins. Uh, we do the same thing here. We have various different vitamins that we dust on their crickets when we feed them. Uh, when they are emergents, when they're toadlets, smaller than this size, we feed them every day during the week. Every single day they get some food. Uh, as they start growing, get a little bigger, we start weaning them off of getting fed every week until they get to the point where they are on the same feeding schedule as the adults. Gerania asks, where does the zoo release egg strands? So the egg strands that we release currently, we release them up in Bastrop on a ranch that the Boy Scouts own, actually. Um, it is perfect habitat for these guys. And we release all of our eggs in the same spot. We put all of our eggs in one basket, mainly because these guys are explosive breeders. They lay all their eggs as close together as they can. Uh, that means more of their eggs will be able to emerge, become toadlets, and live until adulthood. About one in every thousand eggs will turn into an adult toad, uh, will survive until being an adult toad, really. Uh, but that is where we release all of our eggs. Now, hopefully in the future, as we get more facilities on board with breeding Houston toads, we might be able to expand and breed in, or, and release in other areas um, in other areas of those nine counties that Houston toads can be found. Uh, but that is, that is one of our goals. You'll see their little toes flicking. Um, I believe that is to entice the crickets to move. And then when they see them move, they eat them. As you can see, you might also, you may not be able to hear because I have the mic, but their, uh, their tongue flies out of their mouth and makes a popping sound as they eat. And when they know it's time for food, when they see us moving around getting ready to feed them, um, you will hear them doing that without having any crickets in there. You can walk by and they will start trying to eat things. Uh, they're like T-Rexes in Jurassic Park. Their vision is based on movement. They see it move, they think they can eat it, and that's what they do. Again, sorry if I butcher this name. Uh, Jaka asks, how long does it take for eggs to turn into tadpoles? So that varies based on the temperature of the water and the availability of food. Um, but typically it takes several weeks for them to go from eggs to tadpoles and then to emerging out into the land. You see guys, they are incredibly cute. And eventually when these guys get a little bit bigger, I hope to give all of them names so if you have any name suggestions, leave a comment and we might name a toad. Again, guys, if you have any questions, make sure you leave those questions in the comments and we will try and get those answers to you.
And again, if you want to visit these guys here at the zoo, um, if you go to the reptile house on the native species wall in the native amphibian exhibit, you'll be able to see these guys along with some additional native amphibians. And if we ever get back to doing keeper chats, um, we will be having keeper chats in there as well once that time comes around. Um, and eventually, if the children's zoo reopens, we do have Houston toads in the swap shop as well that you guys can stop by and take a look at. So this is what we do here. So these guys are kind of a twofold purpose why we have these guys. Uh, obviously one is for breeding, as you saw earlier. Uh, we have some eggs already ready to go out on Thursday. They are also an assurance colony. Uh, so some of you may remember back in, I think it was 2011, there was a very bad fire that moved through Bastrop and it kind of decimated these guys out in the wild. But because we have these guys here at the Houston Zoo, we were able to start boosting that population out in the wild. Back in 2013, only four males were heard calling. Last month, 200 males were heard calling out in the wild. So clearly we are doing something right. Connie asks, how do you tell males from females? So with the guys you're looking at right now, they are a little too young to tell the difference. Um, once they get old enough, the males have a bright blue patch on their throat. The females do not. I can actually show you a male. If you give me just a second. The males also have calluses on their front feet. As you saw earlier in the video, they use those to help hold on to the female for breeding. So this is one of our little guys here. As you see, he has a nice blue throat. Um, not all of them are the same. Some of them will have bluer throats, some of them not quite as much. And you can kind of see on his feet, see how those two toes kind of look weird. Those are his calluses that he uses to hold on to the female during breeding. Oh, he peed. They do that quite a bit. Um, so he's got a nice blue throat. The females do not. And they also do not have those calluses on the front. And you might see I put gloves on to handle him. These guys are amphibians. They will soak anything up through their skin. So even if your hands are clean, you might have put lotion or nowadays hand sanitizer on your hands and they will soak that up and it's not great for them. So we put on gloves anytime we touch toads, we change gloves in between tanks because if someone has a disease in a tank that we haven't caught yet, we don't wanna share it with another tank. We don't wanna spread that disease around. We do recycle our gloves as well. Uh, we are not just wasting gloves left and right over here. We collect the, clean, the gloves that aren't super dirty at the end of the day, and we will send them off to be recycled. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, tune in again next Wednesday at 11 a.m. for another Houston Zoo Facebook Live. Bye, guys.